Hey guys, today there was a major update to Polytopia where they added a new major update. It's in the beta testing phase and I'm going to be playing it in the beta testing phase. So stick around for a bit to see some gameplay. But first we're going to be taking a look at what this update actually includes. So this update can, has is called, the, it is, says, experience the path of the ocean. It's time to get wet in our new beta. New content, beta testers wanted. So I'm testing, and uh, it's it's pretty fun. So first, we have, you can see some new stuff like the raft, the rammer, the scout, the bomber, the starfish, and the juggernaut. All very cool. So let's see. Hey, Polytopians, we're back with a brand new major beta update for you. The aptly named Path of the Ocean, formerly known as the Naval Rework. We've taken some time to pretty much fully rework how the naval game is played, adding new units, mechanics, and poking everything that merely looks at the water. Battleship spam is dumb, and we can promise you that it's now a thing of the past. To keep things simple and quick on our side, the beta test will be available on, on Steam, and you can find instructions on how to join the beta at the bottom of this post. So if you too want to join beta, as long as you have uh, Polytopia on Steam and not mobile, you can join it f from finding this post, and this post is found almost everywhere on social on the social media. I found it through the Discord server, but I'm I'm almost positive it's on the Reddit, and you can probably find it on their official website too, Polytopia.io. If I remember correctly, I think that's the website. So, so here's what we got. Um, there's some pretty cool changes. For example, aquaculture now has farms, which you can build. So now there's farms on water. So on shallow water, you could, th th it's like the same mechanic on, on land that you could see farmland on the shallow water and you could build water farms. And then you also unlock the rammer, which we'll talk more about later. And then fishing now contains the port as well as fishing. So now you get ports a lot faster. Sailing has a sailboat. And navigation unlocks the bomber and the starfish. So, fishing has some. So we already talked about all this stuff. Um, so yeah, um, basically, uh, so you whales. You remember whaling? Whaling's no longer in the game, and now the whales are replaced by the starfish, which are at the bottom of navigation. So how the starfish work is, they're similar to ruins where you find a starfish if you put your boat on it, and then you wait a turn, and then you can collect resources, and the resources you get are 10 stars. So that's pretty cool. Um, and since the end, uh, the Illyrion no longer can create Navalons. They can't, they just harvest these stars, and, and according to the lore, har harvesting the stars does not harm the stars, um, so they are completely fine if you are worried about the Illyrion's ethics. It's still all good. So... If you go to roads, you can now build roads and bridges. Bridges are cost 10 stars, and you can build them only on a shallow water that connects, or a shallow water that is touching your capital, and um, then it will just, and units can stand on it, at like, kind of like, similar to Allergy. So then they can stand on it, so you could build, and then you can like, build a bridge next to a bridge, so you could build a bridge like, across the entire map if you wanted to, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. Uh, I'll have to double check, but I'm, I think, I feel like you can. We'll have to see. Then new units. So the raft replaces the boat. So now when you put a unit in a port, it just makes a raft. Rafts cannot attack. Rafts just go around with a unit inside them and they just, they have a movement of two, a defense of two. They're very weak. They don't do much. They just transport units and that's pretty much it. But then we have the scout, the scout. So I called it a sailboat earlier. It's called the scout. So now the scout ship is an upgrade from the raft. Since the raft can upgrade into three different forms, one of them being the scout. The scout costs five stars to upgrade into. And it has float, carry, dash, and scout. And me now dash and scout are the two new ones. So scout is the best one because the bomber, which replaces the battleship, does not have scout. But the scout does. So it can scout out area pretty good for like having like one or two of these in your little fleet to just scout out the area. It's ranged and then it has really good movement of three. So pretty good. It's just like your generic ship. And so pretty decent for transportation and scouting out the area. Then we have the rammer. Rammers are good for like having a unit in and then just like smashing into your opponent's uh, coastal area 
and re just doing damage while re releasing your units. So these also cost five, and you uh, and as we saw before, you can get them in the um, aquaculture. But rammers, uh, they are a five cost upgrade to the raft as well, and they have float, carry, dash, and sneak. So where where the scout has scout. The rammers have sneak, which is not a big thing. It just allows them to go faster past enemies. Then they have three movement, three attack, three defense, and one range. So rammers are close ranged, and they have high defense and high attack. And the thing with a rammer is if it kills a unit and that unit is on land, the rammer uh, dis just destroys itself and the unit goes onto that land. So it's a bit different from the other stuff. Uh, so be careful if you don't want your if you don't want your unit that's inside your rammer to leave the rammer, then don't kill units that are on land. Then we have the bomber, which is a 15 cost upgrade, and you can upgrade uh, the uh, the raft or the scout. Either one, you can upgrade into a bomber. 15 stars, and it has float, carry, and splash. Splash meaning its attacks do splash damage. 3 movement, 4 attack, 2 defense, and 3 range. It doesn't have dash, so after it moves, it can't attack. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, they add. there's a new thing where you can only upgrade a boat. So you can only upgrade rafts, you can only upgrade uh, anything. Uh, you can only upgrade boats into bigger boats if they're inside your territory. So that's an interesting thing that they added. You can only upgrade, car uh, only upgrade boats if they're in your territory. And so... These are really strong. They're really good if you can get a ton out and you just like hit them with splash damage. And they're really good for like sieging and stuff. They also dish out insane damage. They're just so, so strong, but they are quite fragile. And the thing, the reason why they're fragile is because they only have two defense and you can't put giants in them. Well, why can't you put giants in them? If you put a giant into a port, it turns into a juggernaut. Now the juggernaut, is really cool. It has a cool design with a cannon, and the Juggernaut needs escort, but it's pretty slow. Now, the Juggernaut is really fun because it has dash, so it's just fun to use. But it has float, carry, dash, and stiff. Now, stiff is a new ability, and stiff allows... Uh, it's actually a negative ability. So when a unit is attacked, it can't retaliate. So if they shoot the giant, or they shoot the Juggernaut, the Juggernaut can't shoot back. But it's super strong, no cost, because you just all you have to do is put a giant in, into a port, turns into this. Two movement, so it has some decent movement. Three attack, three defense, and two range. So it's a pretty powerful thing. It's really good for, like, defense. And, yeah, if you watch the gameplay, I get tons of these out, and they are so strong. So, new buildings as well. Uh, we have the bridge, which I said earlier. Here's what it looks like. You can use them to bridge and bridge onto opposing uh, tribes areas and just like invade and then also it's really good for like like control like if you only build a few bridges and you have really like tight defense around them then you have the advantage because you control the bridges and then the market which is just a replacement for the custom house and the market now so they're the new custom house uh they're the same thing as the previous custom house except they also work they no longer just work for ports the custom house will also work if it's near um, a, uh, what's it called? Sawmill, windmill, or a forge. So it, it, if it's near a port, sawmill, windmill, or forge, it will also give you one star per turn. And they don't have to be near a port to play them. You can have them be near one of the other three options. So, and then two tribes were changed. The Aquarion got a buff. This is really great. It's not an Aquarion rework. Uh, wait, it says this is not the Aquarion rework, meaning there, we probably will get an Aquarion rework rework sometime in the future but they got some buffs so aquarium now start with a riding tech and an amphibian which is great great news for the aquarium that will make them so much better crabs now have two movement in the water and a thicker shell giving them five defense so crabs got a buff now here's an, one nerf tridentons only have 10 health instead of 15 which matches the night nerf that that happened a while back too then we have amphibians and tridentons have lost the ability to use roads on land so, um, two buffs and two nerfs, but overall, I think this is more good than bad. Uh, the lighthouse was added to the game. Now, the lighthouse, uh, they changed the explorer task. Previously, the explorer task was reveal the entire map, but it was too difficult and often ignored, so now it's find all the lighthouses. 
Every corner of the map has a lighthouse. When you find it, it'll add a new layer to the lighthouse that has a color of your tribe. So if you see other colors, you know other tribes have found that lighthouse. If you find all four, you get the task. And then the network task is no longer tied to the roads tech. Instead, it will start the moment you connect to your first city. Uh, and then there's a new map type, Pangea, which is pretty cool. It's like a one big landmass with water surrounding it. So that can be pretty fun. Um, some AI improvements to so the AI is a bit harder and some small balance changes. For example, parks now give you one uh, star per turn or give you one population. Oh, wait, do they give you one star? I think they give you one star, not one population. So parks give you a star. Um, for swordsmen no longer have fortify, making them less defensive. And then... Um, Roads and lumber huts now cost three instead of two to nerf the barter. So yeah, that is all you need to know about this new update and now watch some amazing gameplay. See ya.